Hey everyone, I decided to kind of put out a quick tutorial video on kind of how I optimize DX Story to record uh, high quality footage uh, for YouTube videos. And everything I talk about in the video today will be on this web page, which I have made as kind of a resource for people looking to uh, quickly figure out how to optimize DX Story. And uh, this the layout is basically uh, this first area here has the screenshot of my final settings with kind of a summary. And then below that is the detailed breakdown with more of a step-by-step -step, uh, view. So if you, uh, you want to kind of skip the video and just look at these screenshots, you can basically get the same amount of information out of the video that I'm about to do. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to move over to DX Story and go through my settings. I use the standard default settings for the overlay, uh, which is just basically the frame rate counter in the top left corner that's green. When I start recording, it will show the frame rate as well as the right file FPS in yellow, or below these numbers actually. Uh, so this is pretty standard. I mean, you can customize this to your liking. For storage, I use a one terabyte hard drive to save my footage, and it's pretty much just dedicated to uh, saving footage. Um, I would use the C drive uh, because of the high write speed, uh, except this is a solid state, so it doesn't have a lot of free space, and I play my games from here. Uh, so generally you don't want to save footage in the same area that you're launching a game from because it slows the hard drive down. Uh, standard you know, hotkey setup. I only use the start and stop movie capture. I, I don't use anything else. Uh, I guess this is the most important tab. Uh, this is actually fairly standard as well. A lot of YouTubers use this. Um, I use the Lagarith lossless codec, and I'm able to get between 70 and 90 FPS in Battlefield 3 on high to ultra settings, which is fairly good. Uh, I don't get a lot of spikes or anything. It's very, uh, very consistent. In terms of the mode, I use YV12. I actually originally used, I think, RGBA, uh, but I was getting maybe 60 FPS with that. So I switched over to YV12, and uh, the quality was amazing, and I was getting really great FPS in game. I'm also using multi threading. Uh, not sure how necessary this is. I've been testing this on and off, and I, I don't see too much of a difference, to be honest. Um, but I've been told that it is good to have that on. In terms of frame rate, if I'm just playing for fun and I'm not going for like a, you know, a short video, I record at 30 FPS. Uh, if you wanted to do like a very short machinim machinima video with uh, cinematics and stuff, you should probably do 60. Uh, but honestly, 30 is probably sufficient enough. Uh, my file output is the AVI format. Um, I don't know why anyone would use RawCap, because it's kind of a pain to actually get the output file, because uh, you have to use the AVI fix to get it to work. Um, I'm not really sure why you would use this, but I guess that's a topic for another time. I also record my mouse cursor. I've heard that it makes some people lag, but I have no issue with it. Uh, I figured it's better than, you know, making me appear like a wizard where I'm selecting stuff in game and you're not really sure what's going on. Uh, in terms of scaling, I, I normally run it 100% so that I uh, my output file is what I'm playing at in terms of resolution. But if I'm going for a longer gameplay and I want to conserve hard drive space, I will scale it down to 1280 by 720. But currently I keep this at 100%. I think one of the most unique things about DX Story is that you can separate uh, your audio devices on different audio channels so that when I drop this into an editing program like Sony Vegas, I would have four different audio channels for my different audio devices. Uh, the first audio device I'm using is my speakers, and that is literally all the sound uh, coming out of my machine, so my team speak, my game volume, uh, maybe I'm playing music in the background. All of that is on this one audio channel, uh, not separated or anything. And the next thing is my microphone. 
Uh, I've set the volume to 100 because I can simply just adjust the volume later in an editing program. I'm also using the standard uh, default audio codec and audio format settings. Uh, what I've done is I've used an audio repeater to separate my TeamSpeak or Skype volume or I guess uh, audio channels from my game volume and this allows me to basically uh, when I drop this into Vegas I could completely remove like TeamSpeak or Skype uh, sounds from the video and I could just have it so that only my game volume is left and uh, this is very useful I've actually done a tutorial on this also uh, on an article on the website and I will provide that link also but this is very nice because uh, sometimes you want to make a video without uh, you know people talking in the background and you can simply just delete that audio without removing your game sound so that is pretty much it um, I guess there's the advanced tab I don't really use anything here except for processing threads which I set to the max uh, this I haven't really seen too much of a difference with um, I know that if you have bottlenecking issues this panel is very helpful because you can uh, force the CPU to do more work if your uh, your graphics card sucks or it's not up to par uh, so this panel is more kind of uh, based on your unique setup so I'm not really going to go into this much because I don't really use it uh, but anyway that is pretty much the tutorial or not really a tutorial that's just kind of my settings uh, hopefully the website is useful and uh, you guys get something out of this and I will see you guys next time